Hello, and thank you so much for watching today's webinar on VMware Horizon Cloud on Azure. My name is Aaron McKay, and I'm a senior cloud solution architect with Microsoft Global Partner Solutions Americas. Today, I will be discussing what's new with version two. In other words, what's changing and what we'll see in the recently uh, generally available version of Horizon Cloud. I will go in depth on the architecture and some of the new concepts in version two. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I would just like to preface this presentation by saying Horizon Next Gen is just another way of saying version two of Horizon Cloud and Azure. It is, and I repeat, it's it's just not a version 1.2 of previous of the previous Horizon Cloud on Azure. It is built from the bottom up, harnessing some of the lessons learned from version one. And now that we're all up to speed, let's just go ahead and jump in. There are several different options when deploying VMware Horizon. In one of my other videos, I discuss the differences in use cases around Horizon on AVS and Horizon on AVD, also known as Horizon Cloud on Azure. In this video, I will be exclusively discussing Horizon Cloud on Azure. In Horizon Cloud, workloads are managed by the customer and hosted on Azure. Horizon infrastructure is managed by VMware, while the SDDC and hardware is managed, maintained, and hosted by Microsoft. At a quick glance, Horizon Next Gen offers lower costs, scalability, advanced automation, improved visibility, troubleshooting, and stability, seamless hybrid and multi-cloud experience. Now, from the lower cost perspective, it's lower because there's a thin edge infrastructure that results in up to 78% lower operational costs. And so this thinner edge, as we will discuss later on, will demonstrate the faster time to value and reduced maintenance because there are less uh, areas where you need to maintain. From a scalability perspective, we have the cloud native purpose built uh, for uncertain and even more unprecedented futures that we that we see uh, coming soon. Uh, businesses just need to be ready for what lies ahead. And so with this scalability, we offer uh, a, a, a more manageable global VDI environment. With advanced automation, we use third-party application integration through API connections. This allows for uh, better options when it comes to uh, automating deployments and how do you automate the, uh, the management of those deployments and images as well. We improve the visibility, troubleshooting, and stability of the platform as a whole. And we do this through proactive detection, threat mitigation, and resolution before impacting any customer environments. With the seamless hybrid and multi-cloud experience, you have that familiar control plane across hybrid and multi-cloud environments for a streamlined user, ex user and admin experience. Next, we'll take a look at the evolution of Horizon, starting with the 100% customer managed environment, or the on-prem as we know it. Here we see that the customer normally would need to manage everything from multi and single session desktops and applications to monitoring, image management, brokering, and the list goes on. This is not purpose built for the future. Customers want to focus more on value added effort and we will see how they can reallocate some of their time in the next stages of the evolution. This next stage, we can see that VMware has moved several on-prem components to the Horizon control plane, thus freeing up more time for customers to focus on their gateway application appliances and edge connectors. And you're probably wondering, hmm, this looks mighty familiar. Is it possible there's a third option? Yes, it is possible because this is version one. In Horizon Cloud Next Gen, the pod management and database functions move into the horizon control plane, thus introducing the concept of the horizon edge. Dun, 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 just kidding. 
Each edge can scale up to 20,000 sessions. It's equipped with the proactive monitoring we previously pointed out, as well as the API integration and automation. As you can see on the left-hand side, the customer has a lot on their plate, and not all of it is necessary to deliver a great user and admin experience. On the right, we see the lightweight nature of the Horizon Edge, freeing up much more time for the customer to focus on their work. Let us now look at an example of how Horizon Edge compares to the version one of Horizon Cloud on Azure in a beta customer environment in a simple pod architecture model. We can see that there are 10 pods, and across these 10 pods, they can each run 2,000 VMs. Each pod has two pod managers and two to four unified access gateways and a PostgreSQL database. And the total cost for this per month, $6,400 at a 32 cent per user per month. Now, this worked for a time. However, we've now optimized VMware Horizon Cloud Next Gen to be able to scale across the Horizon estate much uh, seamless, much more seamlessly. With Horizon Next Gen, we are able to show that through the Horizon Edge in a single region locate or location, there's a drastic difference between the cost. In this example, we're able to save up to 26 cents per user per month, resulting in a total cost of around $1,100 per month. And so there's four subscriptions per Horizon Edge and 5,000 VMs per Azure subscription. So we're able to scale across much more for the enterprises of today. As I mentioned earlier, NextGen is built separately from version one from the bottom up. For existing customers, the user experience migration from version one to version two is continuous and consistent. There will be more coming soon on the Horizon Control Plane uh, that will seamlessly migrate you from version one to version two. Regardless of the region in your Azure environment, we still remain consistent in the cloud-based interface. And so this is just depicting how, whether you have a site A in Azure West US or site B in Azure East US, all of it is still funneling, funneling up into the main horizon control plane so that the administrator can work work uh, in the around the same environment and there really is no learning curve involved um, from switching from version one to version two. Next, we will dive a little bit deeper into some of the architecture components. Here's some new terminology in this version. So let's define what these are at a broader level. Horizon Edge, which is technically the network location. This is where the cloud managed components and the end user, end user uh, managed components begin to reside. So you're putting all the moving pieces uh, here and allowing them to expand as well. This is where the, the scalability happens. For the provider, this is the capacity. So the supported hypervisor and platform that will provide the necessary resource capabilities to provision and deliver the application, this, this is where uh, this resides. So for sites, this is where you use the capacity. So it's a logical grouping of the horizon edge that defines the uh, where your end users source their capacity so for uh, many many instances uh, they're sourcing it from from azure and so azure uh, regions can be considered sites the main takeaway from this visual is to see how the horizon uh, the horizon v uh, the horizon v2 components fit together and so, as we discussed, uh, there's the the main components of site, provider, Horizon Edge, uh, but there's also the 
the networking. We have to consider networking in, in most of these cases because we're syncing across uh, many different areas. And so networking is just key and has been a, con a, a constant across version one and version two. But because of authentication changes, we wanted to highlight its importance here again, and we will discuss networking again shortly. The biggest change in Horizon Next Gen is the Horizon Edge concept. Just for clarity purposes, we will dive deeper into Horizon Edge in the next few slides. But I do want to say Horizon Edge is a unit of organization and capacity determined by scalability limits. So it is a single physical location or region, and it's divided into multiple blocks to provide scalability. In our Horizon Edge deployment, we can streamline monitoring and management of Horizon clients and thus the user environment from one control plane. Each Horizon Edge requires a networking location where you implement the Horizon Edge deployment. And this networking is defined in the provider. And Microsoft Azure infrastructure requires an empty VNet. And so these are just some things to consider when setting up your Horizon Edge. Uh, you need to make sure that you have a network security group for the uh, the DMZ subnet and also for management subnet and desktop subnet. In more simple terms, user capacity includes the applications, packages, desktops, and images for user workloads. And so when we talk about capacity, we're we're really just talking about the the virtual machines, the images that they possess, um, the different uh, session hosts, whether it's a single session or multi-session desktop and application pool. These are things that we want to uh, think about when we consider user capacity. Next, we'll talk about the Horizon Edge gateway uh, appliance details. So. A component of the Horizon Cloud Service hosted on a customer's infrastructure is the is the Horizon uh, Edge Gateway, and it's built to run as a Kubernetes cube. And different cubes may be deployed to support different infrastructure platforms or configurations. The Horizon Edge Gateway exists as a bridge between where the Horizon environment ends and the Horizon Cloud Service begins. And so some of the key roles are that it validates the customer has an active subscription for Horizon. It also is an API bridge that orchestrates the Horizon and infrastructure on behalf of the Horizon service. And it also enables the administrator and the end users of the Horizon environment to make use of the Horizon Cloud service features and functions. Here are some of the benefits of next gen edge gateway architecture. And the goal is to keep the keep the customer base at a common level across the service. And so when comparing uh, to first gen, the entire cloud connector or pod manager must be updated with each new release uh, in the first in, in the first gen. That's what uh, the customer had to maintain. Uh, there was no ability to update individual components. There was uh, downtime required for every cloud connector or pod manager upgrade, and this just wasn't sustainable. Appli appliances cannot be uh, easily replaced in, in the first gen uh, in version one that we saw uh, requiring a rebuild or reconfiguration of a pod. But now uh, that we have next gen edge gateway, we see that there's no need to update the operating system or a AKS container cluster or uh, to deliver new functionality. The individual services can be updated on demand. There's near zero downtime to keep the edge gateway current and the edge gateway contains no configuration information so it can be replaced with out complicated recovery procedures. So all of these are some of the transformation that we've created with uh, next gen using the edge gateway. Scaling for unexpected spikes and drops in service uh, demand are important for lowering costs, but so is scaling for expected environment constraints. 
And one thing that we can expect in this world is that there's going to be unprecedented times. And so through providers, service principles and sites, we can manage the environment more efficiently now. And so we set up the horizon, the horizon control plane and horizon edge to be purpose built for the events that we know may just come out of nowhere. And so we want to scale out in most cases. And so I will show a few different examples of how we can do that. You can scale out a single site using multiple edges. And so in this example, we see that there is a horizon edge number one, horizon edge number two. There's a primary provider that has the horizon edge deployment, the networking and user capacity. And there's also a secondary provider that has the networking and user capacity. And so this is another way that we can scale out um, using multiple horizon edges. Another option is scaling out using single horizon edge, but adding secondary providers for additional capacity. And so with this example, we have one single horizon edge, a primary provider with the horizon edge deployment, networking, user capacity, and then two secondary providers. And so the secondary provider is in the same or different region, different Azure subscription rather, added to provide extra user capacity to a horizon edge. So those are just a couple of the examples of how to scale out using Horizon Edge. And now that we have a better understanding of the next gen components and architecture, we can pull everything together and see how they fit in uh, from a broader perspective. In the next couple slides, we will talk about the monitoring and UI updates in next gen. And I just want to say monitoring helps with understanding the health of your environment and it's key to know where the fault lines are. And so in next gen monitoring is consolidated for the ease of use and management of all workloads. For hybrid cloud deployments, you can now get managed and you can now you can now manage and gain insight across all connected pods through the horizon connection service. And so image management is still on the horizon. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, it's coming soon. So the the image management uh, monitoring service is going to be um, coming uh, to the forefront into the horizon control plane soon. Here's a quick example of the monitoring UI. It just helps uh, to monitor the health and pod components that are that are in the uh, in the environment. So you can connect on prem pods to the next gen for centralized management. So all of this is is uh, relatively new for the next gen service and we will also be able to see some of the help desk and user monitoring across uh, various deployments. So there's extra details on user sessions. So you can look at the restart log off times, uh, when that happens, how often that happens. Uh, you can get the machine details, list of active sessions. Many different uh, corrective actions can now be taken because of this extra layer of detail. We also have the licensing portal. And so uh, in the licensing portal, you are able to track current usage across all deployment types, so Horizon 8 and Horizon Cloud. Um, and this just offers for a single management uh, plane. In this next section, section, we'll be talking about the deployment and connection. And so there's a, there's a lot that needs to be taken into account um, when talking about uh, most BDI environments and connection is one of them. For the first step in this process, you have to set up the Azure provider and prep, prep that infrastructure. And so by prepping that, you start with obtaining the Azure subscription, creating a resource group, and then setting up an identity provider. So Azure AD in most cases, and then you configure the networking, the network security groups, any kind of uh, different protocols that you need there. So 
Uh, then the next step is the final step of prepping Azure is adding the service principle. For the Horizon Edge deployment, once you've already prepared Azure, then you have to define the site, register your resource product provider, and deploy the Horizon Edge. And so with all of these steps done, um, we've sped up the process. And we can see this in some of the user launch uh, examples coming soon. Traditionally, the user would start with their Horizon client and connect into the unified access gateway in order to get authentication from the Horizon connection server. Uh, once the Horizon client connects into the unified access gateway the second time, the protocol session comes into the Horizon agent and they get delivered their desktop. And so this is, we have some redundancy in this in this particular traditional architecture. Um, so let's see the user session launch for Horizon Cloud. Next gen. For next gen, some of the user connection flow has changed. So once you start with the Horizon client, you get the authentic authentication to the Horizon control plane, and then you get the session. Uh, similar to as last time with the second round where you connect into the unified access gateway to get the horizon agent. And so one thing to, to make sure that you're aware of is that you'll have to have an identity provider in order to, uh, to connect into this flow. So either Workspace ONE access or Azure Active Directory will be needed uh, for, for this to, to work. So the user authentication will all be browser-based in this scenario. So let's look at a side-by-side -side of the version one and version two. As you can see, it's much. Uh, we're looking at a much more streamlined approach in version two. Now, I won't go through every single one of these steps for the architecture, but I did want to leave you with the user logon and entitlements uh, in, in terms of how the logon approach works. And so there's various steps in this part for the next gen. And in this section, the user is to be able to select the resource um, for, the, for the client UI. And so drilling down into the various levels, the user uh, is, is sent to the, the client itself um, from a much more streamlined approach than, than before. And so with that, I just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in. We have some resources. I will provide the uh, slide deck and the, the reach to the slide deck. The, um, the link to the slide deck. And so feel free to scan this QR code to, um, to get more, more information. And so we also have a digital workspace proving, proving grounds. And so you can follow this, uh, this article to access your proving grounds environment. And again, thank you so much for tuning in and please visit our aka.ms slash bomb to get all the Azure Virtual Desktop VMware and uh, Citrix Cloud on Azure materials. Thank you so much.